our heavenly, gracious, and mighty Father, we have come today to worship you. May your sweet spirit dwell with us, and may we feel your presence, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we remain standing, we will continue our worship with the youth of the hymn 526, God Sent His Son. Sabbath? Do you actually believe that? I hope you really do because he lives. All right, so I want to welcome everyone. I don't know if there are any visitors here. You know, I feel like a visitor. <laughs> but I just want to welcome all of us here today, whether you're a visitor or you're a member or you are the in betweener. You're not a, a, a member, you're not a visitor, but you're here all the time. And I, I would suggest, no pressure, I would suggest that if this has been the church you have been coming for a long time, that you may want to approach the pastor and say, you know what, pastor, it's time. I would like to move my membership, so now I am a member of this church that I attend. Amen? Amen. Amen. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Um, 
I have a, a brief announcement here. You know this is a little warm. You know, in the islands I grew up, this would be cool. Uh, but also, one of the things I was checking earlier, I asked the deacons to check if the windows open, but they don't. Again, in the islands, the windows open, right? So we could have um, breeze come in. We don't have that. So right now, we're stressing out the AC unit that's working. So that's why the doors are open to kind of let that in. That is not necessarily good for that AC, but we need to do that right now. So here's the thing. We're going to delay the final Daniel seminar presentation for next Sabbath because what we will not do is bring someone in here on the Sabbath day to fix the AC. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you, that is not um, normal. We've been in churches where they call an electrician to fix. Oh, yes, they have. And when my wife and I said our piece, we were villainized. For being legalistic. All right? So we will not do that. God will take you through this. You know, I mean, if you have on a jacket like Marvin uh, took his off, do that. If I were going to preach today, I would take off my jacket and ask you for forgiveness and God to, to see with me and ask God for forgiveness. Amen? All right. Now we're going to read the scripture. And we have Revelation 18. Verses 1 through 4. I think I heard Carol read this earlier. You know, God works in a certain way. And you and I just roll with it. So it's on the screen. We will read together, but we will read together. Do you understand me? Some of us read a little too fast. So let me help you stay with me. So together. And after these things... I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, all right, so let me help you. When you see commas, you have to pause. That's basic things we learn, I think, in third grade, all right? So let's say that again. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, Say, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plague. Amen. Friends, let's call men and women out of Babylon. Now, as we go into prayer, if you have anything specific on your heart, take it to Jesus. You don't have to say, take it to God and in Jesus' name, he will take care of it according to his will. You don't have to say it out. You can say, just say it as I pray. You want to pray silently. But one thing I, I hope you would do is that you would pray for each of us. If you haven't prayed, if we're not praying for each of us on a weekly basis, we need to do that. Amen? Amen. We need to especially pray for those who we know should be in church, but they're not here. Amen? Amen? We have to remember, and Carol said this, I was paying attention to the Sabbath school, even though I was greeting. And Carol said something to the effect of, you know, now this Satan is blocking my mind. But we are not each other's enemies. She said, so, so I'm paraphrasing. We know the true enemy. Amen? Amen? Just because individuals allow Satan to use them doesn't mean they are our enemies. We are not their enemies. They're not our enemies. We have one enemy. That's the devil. Yeah. Amen. Well, more. And the demons. 
Amen. So remember, pray for each other. Please pray for each other. There are individuals who are searching and they're being misled. We keep praying for each other. Now, if you have any silent requests that you want to make known by the raising of your right hand, please do so. All right. Thank you very much. Now we will go into our prayer song. And right at the end of this, I ask of you, if you choose to, please kneel. I won't kneel because I don't have a mic to do so. But I ask of you to kneel after we do hymn 671. Let us pray, Father, as we come to you in prayer. Sinful, wretched human beings we are. We ask that you would forgive us and hear our prayers. Father, only you know what's in the depths of our hearts. And you know what to do. So even now I ask that you reveal yourself to us individually. And show us the things that we need to be asking for forgiveness for. And then Lord as you reveal things to us. Help us to be obedient. And to turn from those evil and sinful ways. We thank you for protecting us through another week. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you for all the things you do for us that we have no clue. Lord there are people who are sick. They are struggling financially and otherwise lord i pray that according to your will and your will alone that you would be with them and help them and for those of us who are doing things contrary to your will that is uh, causing us to experience financial and health and other issues help us to stop doing so and to be obedient to you then father i pray that as the pastor speaks the words that you have given to him, that we would pay a close attention and listen for the words that you have specifically for us. Not to listen and say such and such can benefit from those, but listen for our own selves and be obedient. Touch the mouth of the pastor. Touch his brain cells. Ignite them in such a way that you speak through him as the vessel you have chosen. Lord, all these things I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. It's so good to see each and every one of you here today, and we welcome each one. Our offering today goes to Florida Advance. What does Florida Advance do? Churches and schools helps to advance the cause, doesn't it? Praise the Lord when he does that for us. Will the deacons please stand? Father in heaven, we thank you that you have given us so much. We pray that as we turn your offerings and tithes, that we will sing praises to thee, do it willingly and with an open heart. May your offering go to expand the message to the people that, it's, that they hear it. May we be your servants and do your will. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. My name's Christina, if you guys don't know who I am, I am, do you guys know who I am? Joey's mom, and Isabel's mom, and also Marvin's wife, so hi. <laughs> I know, I never talk, so it's like a little different, so Joey, hi guys, how are y'all? Okay, so today we are going to be doing a story. Does anybody know what a parable is? what it is or do you want me to say it? Do you know what it is? Okay. A parable is like a story. And sometimes Jesus would tell these stories just to make it a little bit easier for us to understand, which I think is great because sometimes, even myself, I have a hard time understanding. So stories just make everything so much better. So that is what we're going to be going over to today, okay? So in this story, Jesus will tell us one of those parables, okay? And we're going to start with a little prayer. Does anyone want to pray? Anybody else? No? It's okay if you don't. 
to be my family. You don't have to be, it's okay. Okay, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing me and giving me the opportunity to come up here and speak to the children. Please guide me, calm my nerves, <laughs> and just help me every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Okay. So Jesus being the kind and awesome Lord he is, would spend lots of time traveling and going all over the places and talking to all kinds of people. Big, small, strong, weak, and some of those people always did not make the best choices, okay? So even the people that didn't make the good choices were important, okay? One day, Jesus sat down and started sharing his teaching with a group of taxpayers and sinners. Mm. Many people, including the Jewish leaders, the Pharisees, did not like this. And they kind of whispered and said, hey, he's over there. He's with those guys. They're not good people. So Jesus knew it wouldn't be easy to change these people's minds. So Jesus told them, a story, a parable, to make it easier for them to understand. And the story went something like this. It says, if one of you were a shepherd and you had a hundred sheep and you lost just one of oh, sorry guys. And you lost even just one of those sheep, would you not leave the rest of the sheep and go and look for your one lost sheep? I think I would. Would you guys? Yeah, I think I would go and look for him too. I'd be worried, you know, kind of scared. Like, where'd he go? And when you found your lost sheep, would you not be so happy that you found him? I would be happy. And I probably would carry him back, right? Yep, Jesus said, I would carry him home. And then when you got home, would you not Call, can you hear, can they hear me? No, sorry, sorry. Hello, okay. <laughs> and when you got back home, would you guys not want to call all your friends and family and tell them, I found my lost sheep. I found him. He's here. I'd be so happy. And you'd celebrate and you'd say, rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. And Jesus continued and said, just as you will rejoice about the lost sheep, so will the heavens rejoice when even just one, one sinner repents and reaches out to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And that's the end of the story. Short and sweet. But some important things I want you guys to remember, okay? Jesus reminds us in this parable that every one of us is precious to him. He loves us so much, and he will never give up on us, no matter what. Also, sometimes we can be a bit lost, like the sheep, and feel very far away from God. But remember, he is our good shepherd, and he will keep searching for us and calling us back into his arms until we are found. He will celebrate every time we come back to him, just like he did in the story of the lost sheep. Thank you. Any of you guys want to close in prayer? Joey, you want to? Do you? I feel like he's just doing it because I'm his mom. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay. Bless the Lord. If you bad, try to be good. Love God. If you follow the promise, you be good. If you go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Great job, Joey. That was really hard for him. <laughs> Amen. I'm sure everyone understands and enjoys this 
message on, on the screen, you could see the children and the lion being very close together. So that's a good projection for the future when we go to heaven. What do you say? Amen. As we come today, I want to say this is the best place that you could be Amen. in the house of God. And I do trust that as you worship today, your hearts will be joyful and happy. You'll be just happy in the Lord because there is no better place that we could be than in the house of God. Yeah. And today I would like to speak on the subject, God's final message to man. God's final message to man. And may each one find a message from this message that God has been speaking to your hearts. Let me invite you to bow your heads and pray with me. Loving God and Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for this privilege of being in your house today. Father, I pray that as I speak forth your message, you will just touch my lips, touch my heart, touch my entire being, and touch the hearts of everyone who listens today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let me invite you to turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 18 again. Revelation chapter 18, and I'm going to read uh, verses 1 and 2. That is Revelation 18, 1 and 2. So as we, that, that one is not on the screen, so you can just take your Bibles and turn to Revelations 18, 1 and 2. And hear the word of the Lord that says, And after these things I saw another, what? Another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great, is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. As we look and meditate on this passage because this is the third time since morning we are hearing it. And so I want to say today that as a song, there's a song that says we are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time. It is important we are living, we are dwelling in a grand and awful time, in an age, an age is telling. To be living is sublime. And when we think of the word sublime, it means glorious and splendid. The time and our living experience can only be sublime because God is involved in it and God is in charge. Through divine inspiration, John was shown a mighty angel coming down from heaven with a great, great authority, whose radiance, the Bible says, whose radiance illuminate the entire earth. The Bible gives us that picture that the earth was lightened with his glory. And I hasten to say that this glory is a foretaste of the glory of the new earth. Beloved Christian friends, with the condition of our present world, God has a special message designed for these last days. It is God's final message to man. Verse 12, I'm going to hasten to say, verse 2 rather, verse 2 uh, reminds us of something that is very important. That is Revelation chapter 
18 and verse 2. It reminds us of something that is important. All right, verse 2 is not there, but, but it reminds us of something very important because verse 2 uh, states that the angel cried mightily with a loud voice. This loud voice is to ensure that every dwellers on the earth hear his voice because that's the final call of God. The angel said, Babylon is falling, is falling. This urgency and repetitiveness is an indication that it is sure to fall. And there is still another voice we have seen in Revelation 18 and verse 4. Still another voice from heaven that adds urgency to it. Here it says in Revelation 18:4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that he be not what? Partakers of her sins, and that he receive not of her plagues. This is a call of love and mercy. Let me say that again. This is a call of love and mercy for all of God's people. The Spirit of God will impress the hearts of those who want to give allegiance to him and serve him. So this call is to help men and women to be aware of the impending crisis and escape before it is too late. I want to say today, beloved, that God always warns men. God always warns men of a coming crisis because we have seen the Bible passage over there in Amos chapter 3 and verse 7. It says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant, the prophet. And that is very important. God will do nothing unless he brings a message to us, a message of warning, because we are told that before he destroyed the world by a flood of waters, he sent a message of warning to the antediluvian world by Noah, and Noah preached for a long time. Noah preached for about 120 years. So, the angels also told Noah that God was going to send a flood because when we look also at Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, all right, sorry, Genesis chapter 19 and verse 22 that the angel said to Lot, and I'm just paraphrasing. The angel said, hurry and escape for your life. What did the angel say? Hurry and escape for your life. And this is very important. Well, Jonah was sent to warn the inhabitant of Nineveh before the destruction of Nineveh came. But when the people repented, God also relented. In other words, when they repented, God did not destroy them. So Jesus warns the Jews also of the destruction of Jerusalem, which took place about A.D. 70. And we can see the warning of Jesus if we write down and read later on Luke chapter 21 and verse 6. But let me say that God has a special message for our day. God has a special message for when? Our day. We can, we can recognize that we are living in a very serious time today. And the Bible tells us that then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven. Because when we read Revelation chapter 12, or Revelation 14, 6 through 12, we recognize that God sent three messengers, three angels. But looking at 
verse 6, it said, Then I saw, or what? Another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell where? On the earth, to every nation, tribe, and people. Every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. God did not leave out anyone. He had a warning for everyone. And this is very, very important because the phrase, the everlasting gospel, the everlasting gospel indicates the unchanged gospel that was preached to Adam. The same gospel that was preached to Abraham, Joseph, Daniel, Peter, Paul, and myriads of others. It is the everlasting gospel. It is the good news of salvation concerning our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Jesus came to rescue us from the penalty of sin and death. It is the everlasting gospel because it is Christ-centered. It is a Christ-centered message with Christ as our sin bearer. Christ is also our high priest and our daily bread of life. I'm talking about no other but our Savior, Jesus Christ. He came to save us. He came to deliver us. He came to rescue us from death. And so, beloved, we can say that the last warning message contains a specific announcement given only to men and women in our days. According to what is recorded there in Revelation chapter 7, uh, Revelation 12, sorry, 14 and verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear whom? Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made what? Heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water. This message which says the hour of his judgment has come could not have been given before a specific time. So, beloved, the judgment hour arrived in a time that is specific. In 1844, the fulfillment of Daniel chapter 18 and verse 14. Uh, I, I, I want to recognize Daniel 8 and verse 14 that says unto what? 2,300 days then shall what happen? The sanctuary, the sanctuary shall be cleansed. And this is very important because the cleansing of the sanctuary is a work that Christ will carry out on behalf of man, behalf of each one of us. It entails what we call an investigative judgment. The investigative judgment is going on now. It is a judgment call for everyone to repent and surrender his or her life fully to the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is imperative, therefore, it is imperative that this message of warning be heard and obeyed throughout the four quarters of the earth. I say it is imperative that this message be proclaimed by men and women everywhere, for the time is short. The time is what? The time is short. And I want to say today that this message is the last message. In this last message, there are great and urgent truths to be given. I want us to note again verse 7 of Revelation chapter 14. Just the last part of it says, Worship him who do what? made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water, or fountains of water in the King James Version. 
So it is important, beloved, that God is calling men to worship him. Recognition of God as creator is the basis of all true worship. Did I say that right? Let me say it again. Recognition of God as creator is the basis of all true religion. And it is the basis of all true worship. The fact that God is creator is the foundation of God's authority as well as our responsibility to worship our God. And so, beloved Christian friends, this last warning message unites the fact of creation with the judgment. We are told that men and women are to be reminded of the scripture that there is a judgment, a judgment that is coming. And regardless of how men live, regardless of what men believe, regardless of what men do, it will not change God's plan for the judgment. The Bible tells us here, according to Hebrews 9, 27 20 through 28, and as it is appointed, what? Appointed for men to die once, but after this is what? The judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. That is to say, when Christ come the second time, he will not be coming as our sin bearer. He will be coming as our judge. He will be coming as king of kings. He will be coming as Lord of lo as Lord. Lord, uh, 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 and he will come because Jesus Christ is Lord. I want to say, beloved, this is good news to those who are faithful and obedient to God's message of warning. It is a promise and an assurance that he is coming back to take us out of this perilous situation. We are living in a perilous world. We are living in a perilous time. But I want to say today that there are better days ahead of us. Yes, what is the message of the second angel? We have been told, beloved, according to Revelation chapter 14 and verse 8, another angel followed saying, Babylon is what? Is falling, is falling, that great city, because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Babylon is a symbolic term for religious apostasy in opposition to Christ and his people, especially in the closing phase of the age-long conflict between good and evil. And I want to say today that many of God's people are still in Babylon. And that's why God called for his people. He says, come out of her, my people. God know, knows his people. Do you believe that? God knows his people. So it is important that men and women recognize what God is saying and respond. In these last days, God is calling them out to take their stand on the side of God's truth. God's people will be commandment-keeping people. Yes, it is true. God's people will be commandment-keeping people. And God knows who are his people. We are thankful that God will never make a mistake. And he is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. So God is a God who is stable. God is a God 
who knows what he's doing. God is a God who will lead his people to triumph and to righteousness. Here the Bible says, and the dragon, which is Satan and his representative, was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offsprings, or with the remnant who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Oh, beloved Christian friends, what is the meaning of all this? Because this text is describing Satan's final attack on God's people. I say that Satan is angry and is making war with God's commandment-keeping people. So, beloved friends, don't be surprised when we see even war and opposition in a church because Satan is working. Remember that war started in heaven where God is. But because God is in charge, because God is, in, is the creator of heaven and earth, the devil and his angels were cast out and there were no more place for them. But don't think he's going to give up just like that. He will keep fighting. He will keep fighting until he has no more opportunity to fight. I want to say, beloved Christian friends, God has a plan for his people. God has a plan for his people because the third angel's message warns against a very important issue. Let me say it again. The third angel's message warns against a very important issue. The Bible says, according to Revelation 14, 9 through 10, then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark on his forehead or on his hand, the Bible says that he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength, in, poured out in full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with what? Fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the Lamb we know is Jesus Christ, our Savior. So this is a message warning against worshipping the beast and his image and a, and a warning to beware of receiving his mark. A warning against false worship and a false day of worship. When we note verse 12, verse 12 holds up the saints who obey and live by the commandments of God in contrast to those who worship the beast, who is, a, who is Satan working through the apostate church. I said, the beast is Satan working through the apostate church. Because, and that's the church that turns from the commandments of God, from the will of God. But here, verse 12 says, here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ. And when we talk about keeping the commandments of God, beloved, it's not just a matter of reading about it and knowing about it. It's a matter of living it on a daily basis. It must be in us. It must transform our lives. It must lead us to the Lamb who is Jesus Christ. And when we are led to the Lamb who is Jesus Christ, our life 
will be transformed. Our lives will never be the same. The faith of Jesus Christ. Beloved Christian friends, we have a wonderful God. We have a wonderful God who will keep leading us. The time we are living in calls for urgent revival and reformation. Let me say that again. The time that we are living in calls for urgent revival and reformation. And I urge all of us to be a part of this revival and reformation, taking time every day to read your Bible and pray, establishing your own personal connection with God. That is very important. Each one of us must establish a personal connection with God. We must know Jesus Christ for ourselves. We will not be saved as a group. We will not be saved just as Seventh-day Adventists, but we will be saved as individuals. We will be saved by our relationship with Jesus and our relationship with Jesus is based upon our interaction with him on a daily basis in the word of God and through prayer. That's important. So day by day, we must study God's word. We must pray. And when we study, we must ask, what is God saying to me in his word? And when we recognize what God is saying to me in his word, then we must do what God is saying to us. Beloved Christian friends, We have a wonderful God who will lead us and bless us because in the process we are to be willing to be a part of those who are willing to proclaim the wonderful message of Christ's soon coming. So therefore, every opportunity we get, we must tell somebody about Jesus Christ. Every opportunity God has given us the freedom of choice. And I like the fact that he has also given us the the freedom of religious liberty to worship as our conscience calls us. Religious liberty is an essential component of the gospel itself. But I want to say that there is still about 75% of the world's population live in nations with little or no religious freedom. They do not have the freedom of choice. Many in those nations can remain part of the majority religion or the state church, but will suffer severely will suffer severe consequences if they convert to another faith. Some will be ostracized or rejected by their family. Some may be placed in prison and some may even be killed. I say perilous times has come in these last days. This very time that we are living in is the last days. Oh yes, nevertheless, we are to be determined. We are to be determined to be faithful, keeping God's commandment, keeping the Sabbath day holy, spending time with Jesus is something that we are to cherish and something that we are to be committed to. What do you say? Comes what may We are to be committed to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we are to stand daily on the platform of truth. Sometimes 
there will be conflict with your schooling. I said with your schooling, because some places they are deliberately setting exams and Sabbath. And when you ask for exemption, they refuse to give it. But there are situations when they refuse it, refuse to give it, and the student themselves prayed and asked others to join them in prayer, and God changes things. I want to say, beloved Christians, that there are times when the Sabbath will be in conflict with your examination. Sometimes it will be in conflict with your work schedule. But I want to say that be faithful. God will make a way even when there seems to be no way. God is a God of love. God knows the future. God can see ahead. And God is more powerful than those who are in charge of the school or those who are in charge of your jobs. The issue in this last conflict will be clear. It will be centered around worship. Did you hear me? It will be centered around worship. We are called upon to decide between God and man. That's what the apostle said when they were arrested. It is better to obey God than man. So, if we should choose the commandments of men instead of God's commandment, our worship will be in vain. And the apostle document that, for example, in Mark chapter 7 and verse 7, another scripture Also, uh, Matthew recorded that also. But I want to say there will be a clear distinction between those who receive the mark of the beast and those who are designated saints. The latter keep God's commandment and have it. Whereas the Christian apostasy alleged, allegedly oppose the Decalogue or pretend to keep the commandments but do not accept or keep the fourth commandment, it is evident that the issue in the final conflict will be over the fourth commandment. The Sabbath and loyalty to the Creator. God holds a person responsible for the light he has as it is recorded in John chapter 9 and verse 14 or verse 41 Jesus said unto them if you were blind you would what? you would have no sin but now you see we say We see, therefore, your what? Your sins remain. So the saints will also have the faith of Jesus Christ. What does that mean? It means that our lifestyle on a daily basis will represent Christ, will reflect Jesus Christ. We cannot be in the church and when we have A crisis situation will reflect Satan. And that's why the Bible says, Come out of her, my people. God is calling his people out of Babylon. And I can say today that this church is not Babylon. But God has his people in Babylon and God knows his people and he calls them out of that false system. But if we are in God's church and not reflecting the character of God, then we are living in Babylon. We are not God's people. So, as a people of God, 
We must reflect Jesus Christ. Our life must reflect Jesus Christ. And I want to say to everyone within the hearing of my voice, you may be young, you may be old, you may be middle-aged, but let your life tell for Jesus. Because you will not be disappointed if your life doesn't tell for Jesus one day. One day you will be disappointed. And so, beloved Christian friends, the saints will also have that close relationship. We should not reject Christ. No one should reject God's last message. It is an urgent message that all should be willing to heed the warning and the call to come out of the false system of worship. Let me hasten, therefore, to my conclusion. Because the Sabbath is Christ's great sign of loyalty. And that is true because I want us to recognize what Jesus said in Ezekiel 20 and verse 12. Ezekiel 20 and verse 12, it says, Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbath to be a sign. To be a what? A sign between them and me that they might know that I am the Lord your God, the Lord who sanctifies them. So the Sabbath is a sign of God's creative and redemptive power. And this day, in a special sense, Christians have an invitation to enter into a closer union with their master. The seven-day Sabbath is disregarded by many Christians who have never understood its significance. But we are thankful that there is hope. We are thankful that the Holy Spirit is working. Jesus invites us to, to love him with all our hearts and follow truth regardless of what others do. The book of Revelation calls us to worship him as our creator. The Sabbath message is part of God's urgent effort to prepare a people for each or for earth's last hour. Pray that Jesus will fill your hearts, fill our hearts with his love and with his Holy Spirit. Follow his example and worship him on the Sabbath day in spirit and in truth. It's wonderful to know that when Jesus was here on earth, he worshipped on the Sabbath day. He came here to save us. He came here to set an example for us. And he set a perfect example and he returned to heaven making intercession for us today. So he will strengthen us. He will encourage us. He will energize us. He will enlighten us. And the person saved by grace is one who can say with the psalmist David in Psalm 40 and verse 8. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Yea, your law is within my heart. And when the law is within our hearts, it transforms our lives. It helps us to develop the character of Jesus Christ. It helps us to be loving. It helps us to be kind. It helps us to maintain unity in the body of Jesus Christ. It hurts the psalmist if he hurts Jesus by breaking his law. Deep within his heart, he has chosen the way of obedience, not the way of rebellion. 
We all should feel the same way. Day by day, let us pray and ask God to fill us with his sweet Holy Spirit so that we will live the way that he wants us to live. Oh yes, beloved Christian friends, God will keep us when we are faithful. He will strengthen us. He will guide us. He will give us victory. He will give us overcoming power. And I say today, loving Jesus with all my heart, I choose to obey you, Lord, now and forever. Amen. Are you willing to make that commitment also? Just raise your hand. And God is your witness. God is our witness because he will help us. He will help us to overcome. And that's why he calls us, as the song says in 285, we are going to sing that song as our closing. Jesus calls us over the tumult. So God will give us the victory day by day. And one day we all will rejoice in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We pray, Lord, that you will just touch us anew. Touch us again with your Holy Spirit. And help us, Lord, to see you again in a special way. And return, Lord, to our first love and rejoice in you. And Father, as we go from here, help us to go with a rejoicing spirit. Know that you will protect us, you will deliver us, and you will give us victory over Satan and his representatives. And we will gain victory in Jesus Christ. Bless us, O oh Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus calls us. Beautiful song reminding us that Jesus calls us, not he calls us collectively, but he calls us individually. And we can go from here today knowing that Jesus calls us. He calls us by name. He calls us and he knows our nature. He calls us. He knows everything about us. He knows what we do in the week. He knows how we rejoice in him. He knows that we are going to be in the kingdom with him one day. Amen. Jesus calls us. Loving God and Father, we're thankful for your call. We're thankful, Lord, that you send your only son, Jesus Christ, to this earth to be our redeemer, to rescue us from the penalty of sin and death. And you have called us, Lord, to experience your character. You have called us 
to be like you in character. You have called us to love you. You have called us to have a good relationship with you. We have you have called us to be joyful in you. You have called us to worship you. Bless us. And Father, we pray that you will touch us today. Provide healing to our bodies. Many of us may be sick. And Father, we call on you to heal us. You're a merciful God. A kind God. A willing God. So we put ourselves into your hands. We ask, Lord, that you will provide for us the things that we stand in need of so we can have a closer relationship with you. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the children, those who came up and all of the children that are here, that they, that they will grow to love you. Amen. Father, we pray that you will just bless this church and help that we will grow from strength to strength and be in a good relationship with you. And Lord, Finally, when you come in your glory, make us to rejoice in you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.